Doug. And I'm Kathy. And this is Maggie May. This is Maggie May. <laughs> Join us as we follow the moon. Today we're just outside of Munising, Michigan, up in the Upper Peninsula. And we want to take you through the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, first time for both of us, and show you some absolutely amazing scenery and a lot of other great things. You won't want to miss it. Thanks. Well, we start off today with kind of the one of the highlights of anybody's trip to the UP. Munising, Michigan, we're going to take the boat tour to Pictured Rocks. And this is a national lakeshore. It's a great boat trip and the scenery is absolutely amazing. As you leave, you go out past the shelter of Grand Island on the left. Pictured Rocks will all be on the right. So try to get on the right side of the boat. You've got a great view. We went to the back of the boat on the way back to get some more great pictures. And we're just going to be quiet at this point and let you sit back and enjoy this amazing scenery. Next up, we are at Muldoon's Pasties in Munising also. This has been voted the number one pasty, and since this was the first time we'd ever ha had one, I think I'd have to agree it was the best one I'd ever had. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> this was actually done inside what had been a small home. They've got a gift shop in the beginning. They have traditional chicken and veggie. Uh, you can get them with or without gravy. This is how they make them. And in the low season, about 500 a day. During the season, 2,500 to 5,000 a day. Just in the little area that, of Munising. That is, so, uh, just in the little area of that kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> 
Now, I had the traditional, which is the beef based, got a little cup of hot sauce with it. That's that's my thing. And I just picked it up and went for it. Kathy went more the pot pie angle, I think. That's right. It was the chicken one with the gravy. And uh, we said many times we wish we would have went back and gotten another one because they were absolutely out of this world. They were good. The uh, crust was real flaky, real light. It was real light. Mm -hmm. And the the seasoning, the the meat and vegetable mixtures in the inside of them were great. And their coleslaw was out of this world. It just made a, a nice hearty lunch. Each of those pasties end up weighing about a pound. So there's a lot of food there. What were we eating fast? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Now next up, just right in between the boat launch that we were first at and the pasty shop is this lighthouse. And we just stopped to take some quick pictures of it. You can see it from out on the water as you come back in from the Pictured Rocks cruise. Uh, and it was right there between that and where we ate. So we had to stop and get some pictures because you know how nuts we are for lighthouses. <laughs> And the building that sets out along the road from that was the original lighthouse house. Now this, if you're in the UP, you've got to see Taquanaman Falls. There is an upper falls and about three miles down the road is a lower falls. You need to do both of them. They're incredible. A little bit of a walk back. Yeah, I think but it it's was worth it. Yeah, I think it was about maybe four tenths of a mile. It wasn't bad, but the uh, the color of the falls to Quanaman, our understanding is it's an Indian word for root beer, mm -hmm. and that's where the name comes from. Is the color that's in that? It's the tannic acid from the leaves that are in the the uh, river that give it that color and that white foam comes because it's extremely soft and low mineral water. Now we drove on down to the lower falls with the Michigan uh, Park Passports. You get a one day admission and it gets you into any of the Michigan State Parks that day. Straight out in front of you is an island which you can go across mm -hmm. and, and walk around, which we did. Yeah. So this one is, is considered a Twin Falls. It's downstream from the other one. Um, but there's actually one on the left and there's two on the right that go around the uh, island. The island, I think, is kind of a new change to that falls. Not that the island's new, but that bridge that you see right there was just installed, uh, was just manufactured in 2021. So it's a new addition as far as we can tell. You can go across that bridge and you get views of the other side mm -hmm. of that fall that you can't get from just the walking path. It almost looked like glass, the color. It yes, was it beautiful. Did. Yeah. Now, Palms Book State Park is home of Kitch Itikippi. And if I didn't say that right, I apologize. <laughs> but when you park, you've got a very short boardwalk and you can see the color of the water there. But that water is a natural spring and it's done by a crack in the limestone about 40 feet down. So it's a fairly shallow spring. Um, but that moving there on the left is a hand operated raft there were no park attendees back at this area this was all ran by us by people visiting and that cable that wheel whoever wants to volunteer turns that wheel and it moves the raft along the cable and the whole middle of that raft is open it's not even glassed over this looks otherworldly. It is so amazing. Yeah, you can see the sand coming up. It looks like it would be hot, but it's an ice cold spring. All kinds of fish down in it. And that is the water coming up through the limestone, 
up through the sand bottom. It is one of the most amazing things I have ever seen. Mm -hmm. And that raft will float right out over where those uh, fissures are in the limestone and let you see the spring and how it all works. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. And top side's beautiful too. When you get all the way to one end, you start cranking the wheel the other way and it brings you right back to the dock. Next up, we took a little drive to Manistique. Manistique is a nice little town right on the water. Um, it's got a cute little downtown. But Manistique is known for a couple of things. One is an all brick water tower. Now that's something I've never heard of is a water tower made out of brick. But this is kind of a famous landmark in the UP. And they've got a, a little cabin there. They've got the uh, building that supervises the water management. And they also have a boardwalk that goes all the way through Manistique along the lake. Part of it is paved like this. Part of it's actually a raised boardwalk. And you also can see, you guessed it, their lighthouse. There's lighthouses all the way along the UP. I love that. It's, it's bordered by Lake Michigan and Lake Superior, so no matter where you go, there's lighthouses. Now this was another falls that was really unique, Horseshoe Falls. This is also in Munising. And when you go in, it's got a little gift shop, really some neat things. Oh yeah. And you go out of the gift shop and there's just a very short walk, probably two tenths of a mile if that. And there's the falls. Yep. This was really a beautiful fall. Now this is a, on private land. It's open mm -hmm. to the public, but it is on private land. They do have a trout pond there where you can feed the trout. They were hungry. And Maggie was fascinated with those things <laughs> jumping up out of the water. But it's also a garden and there's gnomes everywhere. It was really, really pretty. It was a nice, Type, nice place to spend an hour or two walking you can have around. A picnic there too. Yep, absolutely. Now, next up is the Fayette Historic Town Site. This is in Garden, Michigan. It is a state park, and it is home to an iron smelting mm -hmm. plant from way back. The iron would come in. Uh, through the lake to their dock and they had this large smelting plant you see there kind of a famous structure you'll see that yes, it is, yeah. I think even on some of the license plates they use that yeah. but it's it's pretty iconic for the UP this building was a scale to the right of it you'd go in there they would uh, figure your payment for your iron and a lot of historic renovated buildings. That is a hotel. And that hotel was open, I believe, up until the 50s. I think so, yeah. And uh, just, it's really an amazing restored area. Uh, lots of buildings. It, they, there are working class homes. There are middle class homes. The one you just saw there was the... I believe it was the doctor's, yeah. the doctor's home. So you get to see all different walks of life. Now, the music hall is in the upstairs of this building. The buildings are all open, so you can go into them. And we're going to take you backstage real quick because they've taken this area where you see the plexiglass. When the performers were, were there to perform, they signed the wall. And this one is a dog circus. We thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> now we're back in downtown Munising again, and we wanted to see if this was a eh burger or a burger. <laughs> and it ended up being a, it was good. It's a cute little burger shop right on the corner, about a block away from the uh, boat cruise. And 
We ended up and sat on the back patio and that was our view, looking out over the lake. Decided to get an order of cheese tots, they were enormous. And then our food came, you had white fish, I had a uh, sourdough bun burger, great. Yes. Definitely do good. that again. Now this is over at Whitefish Point over on the eastern side of the UP and it is the Great Lakes Shipwreck Museum. And these are restored buildings as well as, you guessed it, the lighthouse. Recurring theme here. And this is what it looked like back in the day. It has been very meticulously restored. The lighthouse keeper's home is all furnished. That's still an official Coast Guard building that you can't go into. That's a rudder from one of the shipwrecks from the area. This place made me cry. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. This goes through the different shipwrecks, shows you what the ships look like there. But probably this is most famous because just 17 miles northwest of Whitefish Point, where the museum is, is where the Edmund Fitzgerald went down. And a lot of the museum, including the bell from the Edmund Fitzgerald, is on display there. Now they did replace the bell when they brought that one up with one with each of the lost crew members' names inscribed on it, and it was put back on the wreckage of the ship. But that's the size of the Edmund Fitzgerald. Well, it was bigger than that, but. <laughs> we want to end with a lot of different waterfalls. These will tell you as they go where they're at. Some are along the road, some are back paths, but sit back, enjoy the beauty that is the Upper Peninsula. It's so beautiful up here. You've got to come. Yeah, I, I grew up in Ohio, and, and as I've, I've said several times, I was always told, 
don't bother going up there. It's nothing but pine trees. And there's beautiful pines. There's beautiful countryside. The, the waterfalls, the, the lighthouses, all the rock formations that you've seen. We hope we brought you a good sampling of the beauty that is the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. We're going to be heading from here down into the Lower Peninsula, which we've both been into a couple of times, but we'll be showing you some great things down there also. Anything else? Well, we had lots of places of interest, but yeah. we're, we're ready to keep looking. This is beautiful, though. you got to come. We, uh, we have got uh, more places on the list for next time, so we know there'll be a next time. That's right. Well, if you liked what you saw today, leave us a thumbs up. We appreciate it. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please do so and ring that notification bell. And that way you won't miss any of our additional videos that we're bringing out here over the summer. And thank you for following us as we follow the moon. Thanks for watching today. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. And be sure to ring the notification bell so you'll know when new videos come out. Don't forget to follow us on social media too.